Love it. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the Everything Money Live stream. It is Tuesday, 11 a.m. Eastern time. We are in Ohio, beautiful Akron. Well, Richfield, Ohio, but Paul and I love calling it Akron because we just love Akron. But I love Akron. I love Akron, too. Um, we are here. We are live. Um, we go live every Tuesday and Thursday now. I was wrong on the time, by the way. I said every Tuesday and Thursday at 11. It's Tuesday at 11, Thursday at 1. Which you're probably going to change or move around a bit. I know. But uh, in the meantime, we can't thank you enough for being here. We love the support. Uh, we've gotten so many comments. Paul and I, Paul, talk about the comments you monitor on a minute by minute basis over the weekend. <laughs> I, I look at the app way too much because we get so many comments. And I want to respond to as many as possible. I don't think I've, I, I don't think I miss comments. Sometimes I see a comment, don't know what to say. So I just do like a like and a thank you. But uh, I think that's a big part of it is the engagement. You know, the fact that we have people who can ask us directly questions and I can answer. And I think that's wonderful. And it helps us a lot. You guys hit the like button, subscribe. So please do that right now. Uh, we probably don't even have that many people on right now, but everybody who's on right now, please hit the like button, right? The F now, because I want to make money off of YouTube mostly, not off you guys. Um, but the live streams have been great. We've decided to, instead of looking at a bunch of different companies, we decided to start looking at sectors. And that way we pick a certain sector and focus on that. So we can and we can look at all the companies and compare them. Because a lot of investors yeah. will do that. A lot of investors will pick an industry and say, I want to be in this industry. Let me pick the two or three best companies to invest in. So I'm not necessarily just agree with that, but it allows us to go look at companies and sectors. And then we're going to look at the auto industry today. I love everything you're saying, Paul. I'm just getting, uh, just getting the comments loaded up here so we can talk to our, our, our beautiful fans out there. And so um, we'll get this cooking, as always. Um, yeah. Um, Paul, what, what, real quick, will you try and look? Can you get into everything money Jesus on this computer? Christ. Yeah, I'm on as you. So in the meantime, guys, again, um, this has been a pretty long journey for Paul and I. We've been doing this for two years now. And um, well, not on YouTube, though. Well, oh, that's what's that? Not on YouTube, though. We've been podcasting on YouTube for two years. Yeah, I know. Um, <clears throat> we haven't been going live. We've only been going live for the past month. Um, but the feedback we've gotten has just been incredible. Um, the way you guys uh, and gals are interacting, the stock requests, the analysis requests, it's its really working and um, it, it's really helpful and we're loving it. So um, with that said, Paul, let's um, let's jump right in here. So do you want to start with a, um, a foreign one or do you want to start with a U.S.-based um, car manufacturer? Because somebody requested, we, we advertised Audi on the, on the um, thumbnail. Um, so what do you want to do? And, and Volkswagen Group owns Audi. They own a lot of different companies. They own Porsche. Do they own Land Rover now? No, 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 no. Who owns Land Rover now? Maybe the Indian company? Titus? Um, people Not are Titus. saying they love... <clears throat> people are saying uh, that they love the sectors or themes that we're doing. So let's just jump right into it. We are going to use... I asked a question. What's, what's that, Paul? <laughs> Should we start? Let's go I, to I certainly, I certainly don't know. You just ignore me all the time. I, I certainly It's don't. like we're married. You don't even like listen to me. I, I certainly don't know. Um, <laughs> guys, make sure you like in the comments. Uh, I'm sorry. Make sure you guys comment if, if our cameras and, and audio is filed up. Um, Don, Uncle Don is not with us today. God rest his soul. No, I'm kidding. He's with us, but just in spirit. Wait, how am I going to say that, Paul? He's not here in the studio helping us. Don so did not die. <laughs> contrary to what Seth just said. Don is alive and doing well and in Columbus right now being a good son. <laughs> Let's talk about uh, Audi and Volkswagen and uh, we're going to use our eight pillars to check it out. The stock. All right, pillar, Audi. Pillar number one is... P so first off, Audi's market cap is $86 billion. So if you wanted to buy all the shares in the company today and take it private, it would cost you $86 billion. The PE ratio, look at this, Seth. Tell me. 15. Oh, I Watch like the that. slide now. I'm going to punch it if it slides. We have, not slide. we have a board board malfunction, so we're rocking now. But keep going, Paul. Now, this is not good. Their revenue last quarter makes sense, negative 3.6. It was a bad quarter for everybody, probably, financially. But in the last 12 months, their profit margin is about 3%, not even. 2.7%. So X there, check on the PE. Yeah! Okay. All right, so financials. Let's look at uh, uh, pillar number three is revenue growth over the past five years. Okay. 237, 240, 260, 280, 283. 2878, so check mark there. The big company, $200 billion in revenue. Guys, it's going to be hard to grow a ton. I mean, 
there's only so many cars you can sell. As the world becomes more economically independent, everybody becomes more independent, there's going to be selling more cars, but it's going to be a very slow growth along the way. How about profit growth over the last five years? So profit growth. Oh, it's funny. Wow, but look at this. <laughs> negative 1.5, 6, 13, 14, 15 and a half. Check mark. I'm going to ignore this negative 1.5, even on the 15 mark. They have very consistent profit growth in the last five years. It's pretty good. Check mark there. Wow, profit's good as well. Now, guys, everybody remember, this is a foreign-based company, so it has five tickers. I don't know how you'd buy it. It's over the market, OTC. So I'm sure there's a way to buy it locally, but I'm not an expert at that one. How about number of shares outstanding? Now, everybody, number of shares outstanding, we're changing this from 10 years down to five years. And the reason okay. being, I want to see what they've been doing recently. And this is literally a check mark. It's exactly the same as it was, literally to the share last year, as five years ago, 501.3 million shares each time. For those of you who care, in the last 10 years, it is up a little bit, but we're going to start focusing more on the more recent data and the more five-year data. Okay. How about uh, pillar number six is current assets greater than current liabilities? Pillar what would you six. guess this is going to be? Well, it looks like they, it looks pretty healthy. I would assume they're, they're covering their ass uh, with assets over liabilities. What would you say, Paul? So their total current assets is 230 billion. I was going to guess I originally no that it wasn't going to be good, but now based on this $230 billion number, I'm going to say it's going to be good. And it is good. 206. So they have $24 billion more than they need to cover their current. Now remember, a lot of their assets are inventories. Inventory can be exchanged to cash very quickly, and that's why it is a pretty good indicator. And that's why we call it sorry, that's why we call it cash, because inventory can be traded in for um, cash pretty quickly. So I'm gonna give myself a I'm gonna give it a check there. Yeah, don't 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 give yourself a check for the way you explain that because you're fumbling. <laughs> that was bad. You're, you're fumbling all over yourself. Yes. Um, the pillar number seven is uh, free cash flow growth. What's free cash flow, Uncle Seth? Uh, free cash flow is cash from operations minus capital expenditures. Jesus Christ. Did I got my stuff down right? X, X, X. They don't even have free cash flow. What? They haven't had free cash flow in 10 years. <laughs> What does that tell you, Uncle Paul? It means I would have to understand why they're spending so much money on capital expenditures. But guys, this is not good because, I mean, you use the free cash flow to buy shares back, to pay dividends, to, to do a lot of other... They have a dividend yield. How do they even afford the dividend? Guys, I'm going to go ahead and say Exodus Company. Like, they don't even have free cash flow. Now, they're spending... A lot of money. The, the thing is, like, if it's a temporary... Like, I look at their, I look at their capital expenditures... And it's one thing that their capital expenditures were, okay, it jumped up one year. But every year for the last seven, eight years, it's been $20 billion a year. And that's what capital expenditures are. Putting their, so they're probably building factories. I mean, you have to understand this because I don't really understand why that's the case. This is kind of weird. Hmm. Anyways, go ahead. Uh, Next one. Price to free cash flow. This is... I want to do... By the way... This is nothing, right? Or? Oh, X, 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 <laughs> X, X. It's negative. Oh, no. Next company I want to do, I want to do Ferrari. Somebody requested Adam, requested Ferrari, because Ferrari actually hit my metric in April, and I almost bought some. And then I wussed out because uh, I was being emotional and saying I wanted to buy some Ferrari, but I did not. So let's look at Ferrari. What's their ticker symbol? Is that, do you know what it is? Uh, Ferrari, I don't have it. I, it's I actually would... fun. It's race. R-A-C-E. -E. Oh, my gosh. How'd they get that one? Um, I would say, guys, if you're watching at if you're watching at home, obviously uh, we're going to do some spicier ones. We will take a look at Tesla. Someone last week requested Rolls Royce, and we will look some of the look at some of the uh, more stable uh, companies like Honda, Toyota, and Ford. All right now, stay tuned. But let's hit. Is this Ferrari right now? Ferrari. Ferrari. Awesome. Okay. Let's hit it, baby. Forty-six billion dollar market cap. Buy the company in full. It's forty-six billion. PE ratio is currently sixty. Um, now, with the manufacturer, the car companies, you want to be able to understand that recently with this COVID, their profit has plummeted, right? How, how easy has it been to sell cars? The, the second quarter was terrible. Third quarter is probably better. Um, so the PE is very high. The profit margin the last quarter was very low, but for the last 12 months, it's very high, about 15%. Actually, a little bit more than that, no, about 15% on the nose. So I'm going to give this a check mark because even in the bad recent quarter, it still had 15% for the last year, which included this last quarter. So I think overall, we can go look at the history of it. That's definitely a check mark for Ferrari. Guys, it's Ferrari. They're trying to make a lot of money per car. That's their goal, right? Their gross margin per car is 50%, which means when you buy a car, when you buy a Ferrari, 
for 300,000 bucks. They have about, it, it, really, they have about $130,000 in profit, assuming the dealership makes 30 or whatever the number is. They're making half their, whatever they sell to the dealership for, they make about that in half. Are you surprised by the magnitude of their market cap? I wouldn't think they're that big of a company. Ferrari? Yeah, like how many Ferraris are driving around? Like seven in each state? I mean, like what? <laughs> Seth, don't you have like two? Um, you'll get a Ferrari one day, won't you, Paul? Yeah, that's, Paul? Uh, that's, that's the next car. You like that? I do. Do you, think, do you think I'll be able to borrow it? Have I ever not let you drive a car of mine? Well, okay, folks. Um, that's great news for your uncle. That's great news for Uncle Seth and even better news for our listeners and followers. Um, when everything money hits a million subscribers. Go on. I'll buy a Ferrari and put the license plate as thanks EM, T-H-X-E-M. How about that? That sounds fun. A million? And then we will do some contests where people come out here and drive the Ferrari or something like that. Next. Next. Um, Revenue. What, what is next? Revenue growth over the past five years? Okay. Three, 3.3, 3.76, 3.9, 4.1. Check mark. Slow and steady growth. Very it is nice. Ferrari. It's very niche. But I think as everybody complains that the world gets richer and richer and richer, that a company like Ferrari is going to do better and better and better. Because they are, to me, the, the, the epitome of classy sports car. Lambos are, there's a joke about Ferrari and Lambo. Lambo's the girlfriend, Lambo's the girl on the side. Ferrari is the one you take home to mom to introduce her to that you're going to marry. What, going back, what was PE for this company? 60. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I look at it? Yeah. I think I, I said 60. I think I said 60. Oh, yeah, 60. So okay. it was an X on there. So so, yes. so PE is no good here. Okay, revenue growth is a check, though. What about profit, what about profit growth over the last uh, five years? Look at these profit numbers. 320, 440, 606, 926, 779. Guys, that's the great thing about luxury. Luxury, they have the margin. They're not trying to get the volume game. They're trying to get the margin game. So those seven cars per state that Seth was talking about, they're making their money on their cars. They'd rather sit there and say, we're going to sell less cars. Look at 48% gross margin. Every car they sell, they make 48% of that in profit. And they're still not trying to hammer out as many cars as possible. They want to make sure that they protect their brand. Their brand is about elegance, about exclusivity, et cetera. And it's showing up in their profit numbers. In the last money, that's pretty impressive. Number of shares outstanding. Number four, uh, pillar number five is number of shares outstanding. Check mark. It's low, lower. Not by much, but it's at 1% lower. Check mark. Current assets over uh, current liabilities. This My guess is it's going to be the same as uh, pillar number six. Volkswagen. Total current assets, $3.3 I don't want to, because it takes too long to do that one. Current liabilities, seven sixty nine. dollars Boom. Plenty. They have $3 billion in extra cash. They have $5 billion in total liabilities. They could take the cash on hand and pay off 60% of all their debt. We're looking, we're looking really good, Paul. We're looking phenomenal. PE. Yeah, besides so, PE. Besides PE. We'll look at the next. So we just did assets over liabilities. Let's do free cash, cash flow. Key, uh, yeah, free cash flow growth over the last five, five years. years. Paul? Here we go, Paul. All right. So, free cash flow. Pillar number seven. So about 400, about 720, about uh, 310, about 400. About 700. Okay, it's a check mark. Not as high as I expected. So 1.12, 1 1.5, 1 1.9, 2.6 divided by 5 equals 5.02. 5 so just call it 500 times 20 equals $10 billion market cap. What was their market cap? I didn't write it at 60. No, what am I saying? That was the PE. 45. Ouch. This is bad, guys. Oh, this is bad. All right. So the company is very, very expensive. Mm -hmm. So where would I want to buy it at? Hmm. Guys, the thing is, it's a very expensive company. And I think the name Ferrari is the reason why it's expensive. Because Ferrari itself is an expensive company. People think, oh, this is awesome. This is sexy. This is a very overpriced company. Massively overpriced. So look what I just did, guys. We were excited. Check mark, check mark, check mark. And then you look at the P.E., and it's in line with the free cash flow. <sighs> Everyone's got to fall tremendously. This one's got to fall tremendously. I won't even get in the numbers. It's just not even close. Like we're sub 70. We has to fall easily in half. Easily, well over half. Easily. You're saying you're not buying this company until the price falls in half. No, I'm way over half. Like I'm going to say a number. And the reason being is, at the end of the day, guys, a stock is about the future, it's about the present value of the future stream of cash flow. 
if my cash flow is gonna be five hundred million dollars a year, and it's pretty consistent at that, we saw it's not growing a ton. If it's five hundred million dollars a year, what am I willing to pay to get five hundred million dollars a year? Ten billion dollars, maybe on the high side. Okay, it's selling at forty-five billion. So according to this, I need to pay this. I need to pay forty dollars to this company. Forty dollars a share. It's at one hundred eighty-five right now. 60, 60 times PE. Let's say you wanted to pay a third for that because you want it to be 20 because it's a luxury brand. I'm willing to pay a premium for it. You still have to be $60 a share. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm between $45 and $60 a share all day. So I need to fall big time. Next company. What's the next one? Um, Ford? Pe- people are asking actually for Ashton Martin. I don't think Ashton Martin's. Uh, are they Aston public? Martin. Um, no. Uh, yeah, they are. All right. There we go. Take a look at them. Let's look at them. Everybody likes the luxury brands, huh? <laughs> oh boy, sixty. I even do the. I mean, they, they have good growth here. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back where? Um, looking at, looking at. They the, have no PE. Go to this. Go to the price though. Again, 60, you see the. It was. It's a penny stock. Oh, it's sixty-five cents a share. Look at this price. It was twelve dollars in May of nineteen. Now it's sixty-five cents a share. What's going? Did I pick the right company? Is there another ticker? Does anyone know the ticker for this? There's another one right here. Maybe it's this one. 71 cents a share. What are we looking at now? It's the exact same numbers. Six point. I mean, guys, this is, this is no bueno. If you're buying this, you're buying it on a major turnaround. If you want to put, you know, a thousand shares towards it for 71 cents, whatever. I don't know. It's just, I mean, it's got growth, but their profit is, is terrible. They haven't made money in five, in the last five years have been public. They haven't made a single dollar. Hold on a minute now. In the last seven years, they've been public. So again, go, if you go back to just the, the, the quote or the, the, the stock ticker price, I mean, we always see ones that are trending in a massive upward direction that are overpriced. Wouldn't this seem like one that's down and if the company's healthy? But the company's not healthy. That's my point. How, well, you show, not hear sh- me say? There's no, no show profit. Me that. Show me that. That's what I was showing you. You're like, go back to the main page. Well, I mean. Look at this. They have not made money in the last five years. Their revenue is up a lot, but they haven't made money. Their balance sheet. Let's go to their balance sheet and see what's going on there. Go ahead. Current assets, 745 million. Current liabilities, 1.125. I mean, they're upside down there when the other car companies were not upside down. Cash flow. Let's look at their cash flow. Is there even free cash flow? Negative, 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 negative. No, they don't have free cash flow. Pass. Oh, um, let's see. David Spicer said that the ticker is AML. Is that what you're on, Paul? No, I'm not an AML. Thank you for that. Try, try that one. AML? That's not the ticker. Oh, maybe we're wrong. AM, AML. Sorry. Um, oh, it's a UK stock. Yeah, but you can still buy some of those in the... like you, Aston Martin Lagonda Global Holdings is is the company that owns Aston Martin or has the holdings of Aston Martin. Hmm. Luxury automotive manufacturer. It designs, engineers, and produces sports cars in Warwick, Warwickshire, United Kingdom, and sells those models through a network of dealers. Hmm. All right, next. What's the next car company? Um, should we look at Rolls-Royce? Uh, Rolls-Royce is bad, too. Remember, yeah. Rolls-Royce is an engine company, mostly. Everybody knows them as their cars, but it's mostly engines. They make engines for airplanes. Let's oh. pick a U.S. company because this is, I mean, Rolls-Royce is not good either. You want to head straight to Ford? Let's go straight to Ford. Let's go compare these guys to what our, um, our, our, our local guys are doing. Okay. By the way, guys, look at Ford. In 2000, it hit, 99, it hit $36 a share, five times more than it is today. It was a $150 billion company. This is what happens, guys. In January of 2009, Nine years later, 10 years later, it was $1.87 a share. It had fallen 97%. These things happen. When everybody thinks price is up forever, Ford, company that's been around for 100 and some, 100 years, and it still fell 97% in value in 10 years. Right? Uh, right that's right, what I meant was PE and profit margin. Go ahead. PE, negative, right here. You guys can see my arrow, right? Yeah. PE is negative. Profit margin for the quarter is 5.77%. In the last year, they lost money. Car companies are very tough, guys. Very, very tough. We already have two X's here. Mm-hmm. There's very low margin. It's, it, it's tough. It's very, very low margin. Okay. 
last five years, free cash, last five years revenue, it has some growth down a little bit in the last year, but it's, it's a check mark here. They do have growth in the last five years. Pillar number four, profit growth. 7.4, 4.6, 7.7. .7. So make sure you like in the bottom right corner. We love you guys. Appreciate it. 124 billion in current assets and current liabilities are 92 billion. So we have a check mark finally. We have $50 billion more than we need. They have a lot of debt though, $238 billion in debt. Woo ha. Okay, so there's still there's a positive here. We finally have a check mark. We finally have a check mark, right? Hold on a moment. Tim, you over there? How's your internet? People are saying it's crashing. Okay, I think we're back. Sorry about that, guys. Um, yep. <laughs> Vinny Vin says, Paul, stop buying so many damn watches and pay the internet bill. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. Yeah, we apologize about the uh, the live stream. Guys, we're working on it. We're getting um, 108 meg um, download over here, Vinny. We're working on it, guys. Um, if, again, if, if you saw the camera at one point, that uh, you know, if you're watching other channels and they're not doing all this, that there's a reason. So we're going for it, and um, here we go, Paul. Let's keep going. What? Do you, so we're at we're at ads over liabilities for. We already, we already a check mark for that one. Okay. How how about free cash flow growth? I would imagine okay. this is really bad. I would imagine so as well, because free cash flow is hard in the car business. Mm -hmm. Um, actually, not terrible. Let's see this. So, ready? Nine, twelve. Uh, let's call it thirteen. Actually, eleven, seven point three average times. Um, now this is a smaller, co slower company, smaller company. I mean, a bigger company with less growth. So I'm gonna go times fifteen. So we need $150 billion market cap. I bet you, oh, it's way below that. This is actually, so this is pretty good, guys. The free cash flow is really good here. Good free cash flow? It's like three times more. Wow. What's the reason? Go on. I don't know. So it's weird because they don't make any money. They hate making money. So they must have had a big write-off last year. They only made $47 million last year. They must have had a big write-off because the free cash flow was $10 billion, which is, a re which is almost a record because they had 11 there. Huh. This is odd. This is why car companies are tricky. Check marks for both these uh, free cash flow and the price of free cash flow. The question is, God, I hate car companies. Why do you say that? I don't just even understand. so hard to, un they just always have a problem. Listen, I don't want to get into politics. The unions suck. You know, when I was living in Toledo in 2003, janitors at the at, at, at Chrysler plant in Toledo were making $100,000 a year. More power to them. But you can't expect to make money in a car in a business where the janitor is making hundred thousand dollars a year. You know what I mean? It's just a tough business. All the union things and everybody making so much money. It's just hard to make money. It's a very low margin business. I mean, if we look at the history over the last, you know, some some years. Their are their margins are at best profit margin is five percent, six percent. Their gross margin is fifteen percent. So it's not bad, but I look at it going, the gross margin, 15%, it's a lot of overhead. It's a lot of factories, a lot of stuff to make 10, 15% gross margin, 5% at the bottom line. So it's weird. I mean, the free cash flow is incredible. I, I'm still, I mean, I just stay clear of car companies in general because of, you know, the hard thing. But anyhow, that's, that's where I stand on it. It's just a hard thing to go forward with. Would you like to take a look at Toyota? Let's look at Toyota. Lean manufacturing. What is lean? Lean manufacturing is something that I read about recently. Oh. Toyota is very big on mm -hmm. where they, um, they try to make everything as simple as possible and, and move all steps as cleanly as possible and make everything simple. It's awesome. All right. Oh, wow. Look at this. Oh, we didn't look at the momentum of these companies yet. Oh, well, we'll Not start really. with now. Okay. All right, guys. So Toyota is currently a $185 billion company. Ford, as an example, was 35 or whatever. So it's five times larger. P.E., 13. Got to like that. Check mark. Profit margin, not good. X, 3.45 here. Here it's about 5% for the year. A trailer the last three, so it's an X mark there. But so far, pretty good on the uh, on, on the first two data. We have one check mark and one uh, X. How about profit? Oh, I'm sorry, revenue growth. Uh, pillar number three is revenue growth over the last five years. 236, 255, 265, 272, 275. Check mark. You like that? 
I do. I mean, listen, again, it's a two or some billion dollar company. It's going to be hard to grow a lot every single year. And they're growing about 1% a year. I mean, that's not to be surprised about. How about profit growth? Pillar number four. 19.2, 17, 22.5, 17, 19.1. Um, I'm going to go ahead and biasly give this a check mark because it had some, I mean, it's a very, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and give it a check mark. Even though it's not technically a check mark, I'm still going to give it a check mark. How about number of shares decreasing? Pillar number five, number of shares decreasing over the last five years. 1.55, 1.5, 1.47, 1.436, 1 1.4. Check mark again. You got to like that. Yep, I do like that a lot. Current assets over current liabilities. Pillar number seven, uh, six, assets over liabilities. $190 billion in current assets right here, guys. It's a big number. $190 billion. And then current liabilities. I'm going to guess it's pretty low. Oh, it's not, but it's still a check mark. It's still a check mark, but it's $175 billion. Look at how much debt these companies have. Jeez, OP, so many factories. So they still have $15 billion more in current assets and cash than they do in liabilities. That's a good, that's a good sign. It's better. How about free cash flow? Pillar number seven, free cash flow growth. Okay, free cash flow growth. Annu annual. Oh boy. Oh boy. Uh oh. X for both. Look at this. Negative four, 800 million. I can't even read that. Six, <laughs> zero, zero. This is terrible. X. I mean, so here's the difference. Two different companies. Ford had no profit, but tons of free cash flow. Toyota has profit, no free cash flow. Now, you, you weigh free cash flow a little more heavily. You yes, like, I do. You I like, like free cash flow Why is more. that? Because that's the actual cash you're getting in your pocket. There, there's so many different laws and things like that that manipulate how your profit can look, but it's harder to manipulate your free cash flow. Can you? Absolutely, but it's harder to manipulate that. How about price to free cash flow? Uh, yeah, it's an X because the average is like... Oh, I see. It's like 180 to 1. It's an X. X for both. So what do you do with Toyota? I don't know. Listen, I, I'm very picky about free cash flow. To me, I, I need to see free cash flow. I love seeing free cash flow. Momentum? Oh, yeah. That's a momentum. Mm -hmm. Guys, hit that like button. Thank you, Paul. Hit that like button. Oh, they're smashing away, bro. They are all oh, yeah. over. Yeah. How many likes we got, Seth? Um, we're doing great. We have uh, 26 people watching, 21 likes. Oh, excellent. They're smashing it. We have people all over the world, as always. Uh, someone's watching from Dubai. No so, way. Yep. We had some Dubai folks last time, so, yeah. He's in my neck of the woods. That's right. I'm from Iraq. Nice. Um, let's go to momentum. T okay. Tell me this graph again. It's very confusing so, for our first-timers. For the people out there, 50-day moving average is the average closed price over the last 50 days. 200-day moving average is the average closed price over the last 200 days. So what we want to do is it's considered a very positive sign when the, when the shorter-term moving average, 50-day, goes above the 200-day moving average. I have back-tested this. And over time, you do, beat, you do beat the market if you pick a portfolio of 100 stocks and only buy them, only buy the ones with the 50 days above the 200 right when it happens. This is beaten. Is it a lot? It doesn't beat by a lot. It's a lot of work to go make 1% above the market history. But it very recently, the blue lines that it is the 50-day, it very recently went above. This is a very positive sign here. It very recently went above the 200-day moving average. So it's not going to work all the time, guys. In fact, when you do momentum trading, you tend to be wrong 60 70% of the time. But when you're right, and you catch a big momentum, you're gonna, you can make a lot of money. So for dummies like me, what is momentum trading as opposed to being a uh, value investor? Um, you, you know, they're very different. Okay. So I look at them as two different ways to make money. I'm not using fundamentals and momentum trading. And I'm not using momentum trading and fundamentals. And what's Seth giggling about? Well, from last week, Marco said, I thought Paul was from Portugal. <laughs> <laughs> because uh yeah we had a funny bit oh, last week God. i really appreciate that marco You're, you guys are great out there um okay paul so that was that was toyota yep. and ford um you're not getting your hands on either of these are you uh no I, I just don't like the car industry in general um if i'm gonna buy a car it's gonna be tesla <laughs> why don't you show people just kidding why why don't you piss some people off and show them why Tesla sucks. Tesla sucks at the moment. In your mind, Tesla sucks as, um, as a buy, as a car. You know, I love it. Yeah, I love it, Paul. We, we might actually deviate from the industry today and go to Cisco at some point, but. Yes, we can. We can. Yes, yeah, Cisco. Okay. Go ahead, Paul. 
Tesla. So if everybody remembers the market cap of all the companies we've looked at so far. Uh, 35 billion for Ford, 185 billion for Toyota, and the other ones were, I don't remember, 45 billion for Volkswagen or something. Mm -hmm. Market cap for Tesla, 416 billion. So that is 13 times more than Ford. So Ford, multiply by 13, you have to buy, you can buy 13 Ford companies for one Tesla. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what I'm gonna get to. Okay. P.E. ratio, Seth. Go on. What's that number say? Oh, my God. 1,162 P.E. Okay. ratio. I'm just going to go ahead and leave that This there. is pillar number one. We want this less than 20. <laughs> uh, profit margin, 1.7%. What do you think about profit margin? X. Even their gross margin of 20. I don't remember what we did, but that was higher. Mm -hmm. So, two X's so far. Revenue But that's growth. okay. Let's go look at the other stuff. Revenue growth, Paul. Yeah, they're going to have the revenue growth. That's for sure. Yeah? Oh, for sure. 4 billion, 7 billion, 11.7, 21.4, 24.58. But it has slowed drastically, guys. It went 75% growth. Um, 45% growth. 85% growth. 14% uh, growth. Okay. That's okay. We'll look at other stuff. That's a big X, by the way, in case nobody uh, noticed that was a big X. Profit growth, pillar number four. <laughs> <laughs> Profit growth. The cackle. The cackle. 888 loss, 675 loss, $2 billion loss, 976 loss, 862 loss. I hate to say this. Technically, it's a check mark. <laughs> it went from an $888 million loss to an $862 million loss. So technically it's a check mark. Wow. When the app comes out for everything money, that would be a check mark. That is pathetic. What we should do though is, you know what we should do? We should change it to the last year's profit versus the average of the last five years. That's what we should change it to. Say it again. We should change oh. it to is last year's profit higher or lower than the average of the last five years or something like that. Okay. All right. Number of shares outstanding. Oh, this is wonderful. Number of shares outstanding. We want this decreasing. Pillar number five. 641, 721, 830, 855, 885. <laughs> Guys, can I make a comment? 10 years ago, Go on, it was 250 million. It has over tripled without... People are going to say stock split. This has nothing to do with a stock split. I was, yeah, it has okay. nothing to do with a stock split. Mm -hmm. They just sat there and said, hey, we're going to dilute the F out of every single investor we have by three times. So if you had one share 10 years ago, it is buying one third of the amount of stuff it bought than it does today. So if you still love it, more power to you. Next. Current assets over liabilities. Pillar number I know six. what this one's going to be. Yeah? Yeah. Total current assets, $15.34 Current liabilities. Oh, oh. Go ahead, Paul. Check mark. 15.3 versus 12.3. Chickity, 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 check. Are you surprised? I am surprised. For a long time, they didn't even have that money. And how about free cash flow growth, my friend? Okay. So negative 2.1, negative 1.6, negative 4.1. Uh, negative 0.3. They finally had a billion dollars in free cash flow last year. So again, technically a check mark. <laughs> it did get better, uh -huh. but it's still barely. So at one billion dollars, you have to buy the company for for 450 billion, and last year you got one billion dollars back in cash. Is so everyone, is that good or bad? Tell give, me. Let me ask you a question. If you gave if if you gave me 450 dollars today, oh. and I gave you a dollar back every year, would you like that? Oh, that sounds like a terrible deal. Why would I do that? Now, if your, if your idea is this is going to grow by a lot, but how much does it have to grow by? Ford, for $450 billion, would be giving you $150, $150 billion a year. This is a, so this is to grow by 150 times to equate Ford's free cash flow, um, uh, what's it called, ratio. Is that the most astronomical PE ratio you've ever seen? That's the highest PE. There are negative ones. Uh -huh. And negative means it just doesn't exist. But in terms of... I remember Amazon was once 12 or 1300 and you saw what happened to Amazon. Yeah. Amazon ended up skyrocketing anyhow. Mm -hmm. So guys, you know what I think of Tesla. I'm not a fanboy right now. And uh, what, 
what what price would you be buying Tesla for their exciting growth potential? If I needed extra toilet paper and I knew the stock certificates were there and very soft, yes. I would buy it to use it as toilet paper. Hmm. Nothing excites you about this company. The, the, the technology does. Elon Musk does. He's a libertarian. I like him. Mm -hmm. He's a smart man. He's trying to go to the. He's trying to go to Mars. I think that's wonderful. Should we do Cisco? People have been asking for a long time. So we're deviating from the car business. Yes. We're going to go to Cisco now. Let me play that song. I do love that uh, all the folks that are watching, we do love all the thumbs up. We appreciate it. Share with, share this with a Tesla fanboy that would like to argue with Paul in the comments below. He will be monitoring the comments. Um, and uh, if you see you know, PG behind, this is straight from Paul's lips. The comments are getting back. So I did forget today. I commented on somebody. I forgot to put PG on there, but we'll survive. Great. But that's the first one I've forgotten in a long time. What are, what are we doing right now, Paul? Cisco. Cisco. What that, is this? So Cisco, they're like networks and stuff like that. World's largest hardware and software supplier within the networking solutions sector. Go on. Okay. So one of the things I want to talk about when everybody talks about, oh, stocks won't fall that much. Look at Cisco in 2000. It hit $80 a share. Within three years, it was down to $10 a share. That's an 88% drop in price. These things do happen in overpriced stocks. We just looked at Tesla. Tesla, Cisco was a screaming deal here compared to Tesla. If you look at financials to financials, in the, in the long run, guys, financials what matter. Look at this. If you'd bought here and it went up to here, you said, oh, yeah, but it's not going to go back down to 25. It went to 10. And it took... How many years? The first time, 06, went back down. In 15, in 16, 17 right here, was the first time it cleared 25 to stay above 25. So if you bought it in 1997 for 25 bucks, it took almost 20 years. 20 years later, you'd have the exact same amount of money. I'm only saying this, that's an insight fear, and it's showing you guys how much valuation and fundamentals do matter in the long run. In the short run, no one cares. In the long run, everyone cares. With mature companies, that is what matters. Mature companies need free cash flow, needs fundamentals. This is exactly the point. And you can go to so many stocks back. Look at Ford. Ford was here and now it's here. Everything is overhyped during bubbles and that's what to be apprehensive about right now. But we'll move on. The market cap of Cisco right now. You like mature women. That's for sure, right? I Paul? do like mature women. I like women like I like my stocks. Mature. Mature and thick. thick. <laughs> well, I know. The, the bank account being thick. I don't know. I just, I think thick. You do like, you do Two like C's, them thick. I, I, like, I, I don't like them thin. Yeah. But, you know, Lisa was very thin. Yeah. I, mean, I used to tell her, though, I'm like, you need to gain some LBs. Good for you, Paul. Tell these women. Am I going to start crying on the ground here? <laughs> tell these women what. Um, Is that I, thick with two C's or a CK <laughs> at the end? Yes. I mean, people are talking about the, the bubble. Um, you're talking about that bubble, but is um, basically your, the gist of what you're going after here. He's on grind. He's, yeah, he's currently on Tinder at the moment. Just give, yeah, give him a moment. I'm getting a message in. from Don. Anyways. Here we go, guys. Um, so what, so this, what company is it? Cisco. Go, 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 Paul. Sorry. All right. P.E. ratio, 15.24. Chickity check. I, I love that, right? Yep. Profit margin, Profit 21%. Margin. Check. Gross margin, 63%. Chickity check. In the last year, their profit margin, their profit's been about 21% again. Check again. So more mature company, they're going to be much more likely to have very consistent profit. All these margins are going to be very, very consistent over time. That's what I like about mature companies. Let's go to revenue growth over the past five years, pretty please. I imagine this is going to be great. It could still have growth, but it's not going to be great. Look at this. <laughs> 49.25, 48, 49.3, 52, 49.3. Uh, the smallest check you can possibly imagine. It is technically a check, but it's not bueno. Mm -hmm. All right. But again, it's a big company. Look back at 2011, 43 billion. So this is one of those companies that's not sexy. It's not growing a ton, but I want to show everybody, let's go back to 2000 to 2000 and see what it looked like. Go on. When it was $75 a share. It's only doubled in revenue since then. It's only doubled in revenue guys. And the stock has gone down in half. That is exactly my point. That is what happens. Uh, okay, 
Number of shares outstanding? Yes, pillar number pillar No, number profit, five. profit, profit, oh, profit, profit, profit growth. Pillar number 4, profit Very growth. Very consistent. 10.75, 9.6, 110 million. I guarantee there was a big write off there. 11.6, 11.21 check. They probably had some big write off here, but they had to write off some acquisition. You just have to look at it. We'll look at the free cash flow statement and probably indicate that completely. Number of shares outstanding. We want this decreasing. Pillar number 5, number of shares 5.05, 5.01, 4.84, 4.4, 4.24. Check any check again. How about assets over liabilities? Current assets over current liabilities. I imagine this is going to be really good. Current assets, 43.57. Current liabilities, 25.3. So what do we call that? A check. Hours left over. Free cash flow growth. Pillar I love number. the free cash flow. This is my Number seven, this is Paul's favorite. My Pillar favorite seven, one is free, free cash flow. Free cash flow growth. By the way, yes. um, have you noticed this? Like, uh, I hate to get into this. I do this all the time. It's okay. So is this some sort of white power thing now, oh, apparently? I mean, stop. Have they taken this from us now? Isn't Argentina I, I can't even bad? do the okay. Like, I do this all the time. I do my threes like this. And, you know, Paul, you and I, like uh, Wolf on Wall Street, want to do our twos more like this. You know, give me, <laughs> bring me two drinks. But, um, yeah, so if you're wondering... Um, like two drinks. I'm just <laughs> two drinks. I'm just. I love the okay. And if they've stolen that symbol from us, the bad guys, I'm terribly sorry about that. My my apologies. But um, yes. Yeah, so anyway, I'm um, Paul. Where are we? What where, where are we? Free cash we're, flow. Free cash flow growth. Uh, over the past how long? Five Paul? billion. Three point two. Uh, ten. Uh, ten point three, and negative three point two. Ooh, that's weird. Weird one, huh? Hmm. This one's an X. Um, that's odd. So that cancels each other out. 25, five is the average times 20 equals hundred billion. Another X. Cause what, what was their value? Like 150 billion. Can you double check? Yeah. So we have them, we want them worth around hundred billion or less. Yeah. 170 billion. So this is an X. Now look at the, you know, the ironic part. You know what the ironic part is? Go on. Where am I buying them at? Roughly $25 a share. I would buy them at $25 a share and you go back to history, 1997. Now, I will say the PE being 15 is a little confusing. So maybe I'm paying a little bit more for this. Maybe I'd be willing to pay low 30s for it. So maybe call it 35 or less. I'm going to start looking at it because that last year they had negative $3 billion in free cash flow. So I'd want to investigate why that was. It could be a one-off reason why and we don't want to we don't want to punish a good, solid company for a one-off reason. You want to punish them if that one-off reason happens very frequently. So in this one, maybe we're paying thirty-five less than $35. We're interested in it. But look at that. If you bought it in 1997 for 25 bucks a share, I'm sitting there saying I want to buy it for $35 a share. Do you see what I mean by overpriced? People would have said back then, come on, Paul, you're crazy. Look at this growth right here. Come on, Paul. Look at this growth right here. This company's growing. See, Paul, you're wrong. You're wrong. You're oh. <laughs> why? Why do so many people love this? Then, of all the companies to love, we've gotten a lot of love well, for this. Listen, one. they got they got pretty decent financials. Even though that free cash flow wasn't great, I'm not. I like seeing the sometimes the complete random negative year. Because I sit there and say, listen, there's probably some explanation for it. You got to do your research on that. But that stuff doesn't bother me at all. Mm -hmm. So anyways, what else we got, guys? Oh, let's do momentum here. Yeah, please do. Momentum. Now, again, they pay a pretty solid dividend, by the way. Okay. What, what is it? 3.5%. Okay. Question is, can they afford it? Oh, F. Let's go to the technicals here, kids. Close that. Make sure, as always, you're smashing that, button, that like button in the bottom right corner. Destroy that thumbs up. All place. right. This is a negative. This is not a good one. Uh -oh. They just recently crossed below the 200-day moving average as recently as last month. They crossed above it in July. So this was a, probably a fake out. It was like, oh, it's going to do well. You probably thought, oh, look how smart I am. And then it gapped down lower and started to go down. This is called a gap. When it just drops overnight and there's something to fill, this is called a gap. Now, a lot, of, a lot of people would sit there and say that this is going to end up going back into this. It has to fill that gap up in some way. So if you're a short-term trader, maybe you buy this thinking it's going to go to 43, 44. But in terms of momentum, the momentum is on the negative side right now. It, is, it crossed over to the negative right there. So 
Cisco all around might be a hard one to do, but uh, you have to do more research. By the way, nine times out of 10, I'm gonna say you need to do more research. And that's the difference between me and other people out there is I don't just look, first off, the fact that we're even looking at financials is you know, way more than most people would do. But then from there, I sit there and say, you have to still understand even more than that. So um, we got a great comment just now, and I'd like to address, because this is a very, um, uh, uh, Lauren asked. Um, Lauren? L-A-R-E-N. Oh. Uh, La Lauren? Um, Lauren? He just asked an interesting question, and this is very simplistic, so I'm glad you asked it. He said, um, let's say you bought a stock like Tesla at a, a, Tesla at a low price and started to go nuclear. How long? I know what you're going to say. How long do you hold it? What is a good ex exit strategy? What do you think about holding long? Like, what do you think I'm going to say, Seth? Well, you know, I I held Tesla. This is an excellent question, by the way. Yeah, I held Tesla, and you always say something to the effect of like, "How are you going to know when to get out?" Mm -hmm. And then if it drops, when do you get out? And I always say, "Oh, I, I guess I always think I'll know. I'll just know. Like I'll know when to get out." And what do you always say? My answer is going to be, it depends. Can we get uh, a pronunciation of the name? Is it Laren, Lauren? Laren? Oh, Laren. If your goal is to buy companies with good fundamentals, you sell them when they're selling for a price way above their, you pick a price based on their fundamentals. When it hit the value you've determined for it, then you sell it. If your goal is momentum, I'm very big on having a system in place. What is your goal? You pick, anybody out there who's just trading the trade, get a system in place. Decide what you're gonna do. Are you gonna, are you, gonna you know, even if it's like, hey, if I buy this, if it goes up, the first time it goes up 30%, I'm selling. Whatever the system is, stick to it. What is the answer? I wish the answer was easy. It's not easy. I will say, I have found that the more you bring your emotion into it of trying to decide when to sell, the worse it will go. It, is, it has been proven over time that human, when it comes to investing, when you get humans, a human decision involved, it tends to affect returns to the negative side, unless there's a system in place which eliminates more of the human emotion aspect. Does that make sense? It's not exactly what you want to hear, but when do you want to, when do you want to sell? It's easy in the value investing world. I sell when it hit my price or there's a better opportunity somewhere else. I just go, hey, listen, let's say, for example, I bought... Acme Corp at 10 bucks, I think it's worth 20. It goes to 18. All right, it's not at 20 yet, but I found XYZ Corp selling for a price at half the point I think it's worth. I might just sell the, the, the Acme at 18 going, hey, I already made 80% money on that. Let me sell it and go buy the one that's worth half so I can make more money on that one. There's so many factors. I wish it was just an easy cookie cutter, do this. But the more and more I get into day trading and momentum trading, the more and more I realize systems are what make things work. With value investing, it's analysis and understanding the analysis you put in the companies and understanding how you make money and the cash flow is really important. When you sell, again, is very easy, not very easy. It's on value investing, it's based on it hitting your price. And on momentum trading, I believe it's in the systems. Like you determine I'm buying at this point when the 50 day goes over the, the 200 day and I'll sell when it goes below the 200 day. You're going to you're going to make mistakes, guys, just like everything in life. You're going to make mistakes. But if you do the right system for long periods of time, you, it's like the blackjack, it's like blackjack. Everybody out there plays blackjack, right? If you have 16 and the dealer is showing a seven, what are you supposed to do? Hit. Every single time. Have to. Does that mean you're going to win every single time? Of course not. But over long periods of time, what, what, you're going to lose less than if you st st stood pat every single time. And you'll go to the blackjack table and you have some moron who say, who'll hit with a, who'll stay with a six. And the dealer is showing, showing seven, flip it over, it's a nine. They hit again, they'll say, see, I told you I won. Yes. Like, yeah, you won this time. But over thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of hands, you will lose more I, money. You know, you and I both love the movie Moneyball. And I see how it plays into, I see why you would like that film. Like, oh, talk, yeah. talk, talk about what, you know, if you haven't seen, first of all, if you're out there and you haven't seen the baseball movie Moneyball with Brad Pitt, it's incredible. It gets me emotional. I actually have cried several times watching it. Because of the money or because of the winning? I don't think it has anything to do with the money. I mean, it has to do with the money. It has to do with the whole fact that this guy went against the grain. He picked a system that worked for him. Yeah. And everybody said he was wrong. And the early results said he was wrong. But he stuck with it because he's like, I believe in this. And it ended up being 
Right. Now, the Athletics haven't won a World Series, you know, in 30 years. But the point is, they've won the, they've probably won the most games on the least amount of money out of any team out there over the last 20 years. Yeah. And that's the impressive part. They lost Giambi and Damon, um, Johnny Damon and the other guy, the pitcher, and won more games without them than with them. Won one more game without them. Mm-hmm. And everybody thought it was crazy. And until the Indians of two years ago, they had the record for the most wins in a row yes. at 21. Mm-hmm. So Moneyball is a very great movie. I love it. Laren, did I answer your question? That's the first, that's the first thing he, I asked. Um, he hasn't uh, chimed back in, but that's okay. I was, at, uh, I was at the game where the Tribe won their 22nd. Um, oh, were you straight, really? But I had a small child with me, so we, um, we had to leave early. So they came back in the ninth or something, or maybe in the 10th, so I didn't see the ending. <laughs> I left when they were losing. So that's the that kind was of a great fan. game. That's the kind of fan I am. So um, we're going to say hi to Matt Jensen, my chess coach. He is in a meeting right now. He told me he couldn't make it, but he's still in the chat. But he has us on mute. So so, everybody so, say hi, Matt Jensen. Someone said, what's your streaming schedule? Um, at, at the moment, we will be announcing it much better. We only started streaming four weeks ago, so we're, we're still getting used to it. We are streaming at 11 a.m. Eastern time, USA Eastern time, um, which is the, uh, the earliest time for the U.S., and and we are will be streaming at one o'clock on Thursday. So Tuesdays are eleven a.m. Eastern time. Thursdays are one p.m. Eastern time. And we're gonna try and keep that. We might actually try and get the times synced up so they're the same each day, so you can count on us. And we are working toward a video per day, guys. So I told Paul. Uh, I told Paul um, moving forward, like when I subscribe to a when I subscribe to people. I really miss when they don't put videos out. So we want to keep that, keep, keep the momentum going. Our, our 200 day momentum has been flying, Paul. So we need a lot of <laughs> So yeah, it's two, up a lot. Tuesdays at 11, Thursdays at 1 p.m. Eastern time right now. Um, Paul, I think we can wrap. People are just, um, people are just, um, just chilling. Could you take a look, a fast look at MGA, actually? Milan's asking. MGA. What is that? I have no idea. Yeah. And Hector Magna, Hector has been asking Wait, about, is this uh, the one that's um is this um Aston Martin? MGA? No. Yeah. Uh Hector has asked multiple times for Neo. Uh Hector, we did Neo a couple weeks ago and Paul couldn't even get past two pillars before that's he right. just cut I it just right off. That's right. I just stopped it. Yeah, it's like uh, PE is cr- uh, non-existent. There's no profit, there's no revenue. It's uh for 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 Paul's type of investing, it's a big time not NIO, NO for Paul. Um, you like how I did that, Paul. I but did. um, yeah. So go ahead. This is um, MGA stock. God damn it, Paul! How dare you? PE negative X. Yeah. So Laren said. Uh, Laren said y- yes. That's true. He doesn't. Um, the hardest thing you find is when he holds stock. I have a high conviction for how long they're gonna go. I mean, that's the tough part, right? You always tell me if I had Tesla. So I sold my Tesla. My son sold my Tesla, and as it keeps going up and up and up, he said, "When would you have sold?" And the funny part is you always say, Paul, well, you would never know when you sold, but, but everybody actually, thinks they know when they but sold. I did. Oh, I, I just sold at the top. But I, well, I did sell when I thought, I mean, I guess I was, I sold at what I thought was a nice top and I was content with it. Now you that it's, remember, now that it's skyrocketed, ne- I look like a fool. You'll never buy at the bottom and you'll never buy at the top consistently. I mean, you'll never sell at the top consistently. Get over that thought. If it's happening and anybody tells you they do, they, they picking one example of the last 20 years. It does not happen. That's why I like fundamental analysis and these eight pillars. It just tells you if I buy a good company at a reasonable price, I will do well. That's what matters. Okay. Let's go back to MGA. What, what, what is this company? I don't even know. Uh, yeah. It's a supplier, auto supplier. Okay. Negative PE. They don't make money. Gross margin, 2%. Garbage. Haven't made money on $31 billion in revenue. They lost $180 million in the last year. How do you think I like it so far? I don't think you like it very much. Yeah, I don't. How about revenue growth? Revenue growth is there. 32 billion to 39 billion. Check mark there. Growth? Uh, they have profit in the last 10 years, but recently, obviously, a supplier, it's been weak. They went from 2 billion down to 1.7. So X there still. It is still decreasing. Number of shares outstanding, decreasing. So check mark there. Good check mark for shares. Yeah. Okay. Or assets, uh, assets over liabilities. Total current assets on. versus total liabilities. 9.6 billion in current assets. Cash flow. Free, free cash flow growth. Okay. Gross profit. Oh, that's not even right. It's an, ah, found an error in, in um, I think we found an error. 15%, which is still not great. 
This to me, guys, is Hold a on. feast or famine company. Hold on a moment, Paul. It looks like everything is crashing out again. Yes, we have tears. People are saying MG is so bad that it crashed the stream. Yeah. MJ? Uh, oh, <laughs> MG is so bad. Uh, here, you're back. All right. Um, go ahead. Go ahead, Paul. I think there might be an error here in white charts. Their gross margin is about 15%. It's not great, guys. And for an auto supplier, they tend to be feast or famine. When things are good, they make a lot of money. When things are bad, they lose a lot of money. Um, I would actually say I'm not opposed to this company mm -hmm. if you think the future of automotive in the next 10 years is going to be way better than today or better than today. Um, yeah, their gross profit here was... Oh, I see what they did. Okay. I understand that now. Okay. So... I, I take it back. I was going to stop this thing very early and say, F this. Mm -hmm. But this is why we do more research. I take it back. I'm not totally opposed to this. I'm not in love with this just because it's the auto industry, but they have good free cash flow. They're selling for a good multiple. They're selling for about what? 10 times free cash flow. It's not terrible. I mean, obviously, really. So if you can buy this thing, you know, and dollar cost, I mean, I don't know. I just, I, for some reason, I'm just very anti-auto business. I feel like it's an auto supplier. <sighs> what do they supply auto-wise? Interior, exterior, seating, roof says, okay, so it's not going to be a powertrain. So they got to worry about electric cars. Uh, half of their revenue comes from North America. Europe accounts for 44%. So they haven't even touched China yet. So, eh, not, it's not, listen, I'm not, Gro I'm not. Growth potential? I'm, I, I'm not. In love, and I'm not against it. I'm looking at saying, if you see the story about how it goes forward, um, it doesn't seem like it's terribly, terribly overpriced, but just be cautious about auto industry that when, if you think another recession is coming or another downturn is coming, this will get hit very, very hard. Maybe you wait until a recession hits and then you go get this thing done. So we thank you for hanging through uh, the lull in the transmission. And since you did hang with us, uh, we will reward you, um, folks. Paul, uh, they want you. Uh, they want their uncle Paul to look at Planet Thirteen. Right now. Right now. Oh, we're going over our mark, kids. Now this is special bonus footage. Is this? They're saying this is a cannabis store, Paul. Oh boy. Now I would think this has massive potential growth, wouldn't you think? Good lord, mm -hmm. it's legal in like three states, and then when it's legal in fifty, it's going to be crazy. There are. Do you more know how many of these are going to be? That's the thing you guys remember. Everybody thinks, oh, the, let me ask you this question. How many more cars are sold today than 100 years ago? How many more air, 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 airlines, how many more people fly today than 100 years ago? I have no idea. Tell me. Zillions. Tons more, right? Yes. How many airlines and auto companies have gone out of business in the last 100 years? That I don't know. You always say this. I don't Hundreds. know. Hundreds. So if it, all that mattered was the industry having potential, why we had so many companies go out of business? Because, guys, it does not effing matter. Stop sitting there looking at the growth potential of the industry as your reason for buying. Because everybody's going to go into it, and a lot of people are going to fail. The number of auto industry and airline bankruptcies and people have gone out of business is astronomical. So, and 100 years ago, four people in the world had a car. Not literally four people, but nobody had cars. Now, every single person has two cars, even if you're poor. So, clearly, the auto industry sector has had a huge growth, but it hasn't worked. For many, many auto, and it's still hard to, for auto companies to make money. We're talking about cannabis here, Paul. And next thing is, cannabis is the exact same industry. If I told you how many people pitched me cannabis in the last three years, you would be nauseous. And all the people who pitched me, guess how many of them are still in business? I you, don't know of a single one that's in business. You mean they'd, you'd be high, not nauseous? Yes, you're right. Okay, go on. Nobody. <laughs> oh, terrible. crickets. I meant to go here, and I hit crickets. Oh, boy. That okay, was crickets. Go don't worry. Go, on, go, ahead. One. go ahead. Everybody pitches me cannabis, and guess what? Very, very, let everything settle and find the ones that do well and then focus on those ones, in my opinion. But let's go look at this one. Okay, let's look at PE ratio. It has a 17. Negative. Paul, don't, don't yell now. Okay. S uh, negative PE? Yeah, negative. X. They lose 37% okay. of their revenue. They have a good gross margin, 44%. You buy the company for $500 million. The revenue is $60 million. Sweet. 10 times, free re 10 times revenue. Oh, look, the revenue? Revenue growth. I'm going to go to annual. Revenue All right, they've tripled growth. in the last uh, year. That's pretty de decent. Triple, triple? Check mark. Okay. Profit. Nope, they lose money still. Well. Lost a lot more. They lost 
10,000 four years ago. Now they lose 7 million. Number of shares outstanding. I'm sure it's going up. Yep, it's up. So X mark there. Balance sheet. I bet you this is pretty good. Current assets, 1 million. Current liabilities, 15. Check mark there. Okay. I like that. Free cash flow. I bet you this is definitely negative. Well, it has to be negative. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe not. Um, yeah, it's negative. Uh, negative 18, uh, negative 11. So it's taking me a check mark. Because it's going up? <laughs> it's getting better, but it's still not good. Uh, guys, I, you know, I, this, is, this is not the company to ask me about because I just don't buy into these at all. But you know, also revenue, guys. 10 times revenue to own this company. Um, yeah, that doesn't happen. That's not- What does that mean? It means for every dollar of revenue the company brings in, you're going to pay $10 for it. The- Auto industry is like 0.4. For every dollar revenue brings in, you're buying it for point for 40 cents. Um, it's just, it's a really high multiple. Everybody's going to this one because they want to see it become the next $5 billion company to make 10 times their money. If you invest in 100 of these, you're going to lose a lot of money. But this could be the one that works. This could be the one that works. And we'll end with this, folks. Uh, Paul, you've been a huge fan of Carnival Cruise over the past uh, many months. You bought, I bought, um, I agree with you. It's down big time. They canceled more cruises. Benjamin says down 7%, buy more. Carnival Cruise Line? Yeah. Is it down 7%? I have a couple options on Carnival Cruise Line. So once they trigger, I will be happy. Yeah, 14 bucks, sweet. I bought it, I think it was 17 and 12. So my average, I'm still down right now, but I hope it goes to seven. Like it did this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, oh, well. Still buy? Uh, I, I'm still acquiring shares for the long run. Again, if you're, if you're short-term oriented, don't do it. But I'm acquiring shares for three, four years from now. We talked about Carnival Cruise Line in a past episode, if you look back, um, because Paul thought it was the healthiest of all the cruise lines. And I love when you say, are cruises going away permanently? The answer is obviously not. So, at some point... They'll be up and flourishing, and they have money to sustain sort of another downturn, which, Paul, as you may be seeing, with the virus cases going up, it's getting a little more scary out there, and uh, we have well, some... Well, the, the virus cases have no chance but to go up. What's you can't that? lose virus cases. I'm sorry? <laughs> Nothing. Okay. Um, okay, great. That's been an hour and five minutes, guys. Um, yeah. Thank you for your support. Thanks, guys. Thanks Hit the for all like the people button. that all jumped in and out. We got tons of likes. Yes. And um, we will see you on Thursday, Paul. Thursday. We will see, see you on Thursday, 1 p.m. Eastern, Eastern time. time, USA. Thanks, guys. Bye. See you around. Bye. Let me know when we're not live anymore.